So we've done a few videos on Project Betty. Me and Brennan got this car running, driving, mobile again on its own. Now we're actually going to start the build process. And the first thing we're going to tackle is going to be the radiator. Now the reason we're doing that is we've been moving this car around, we've been driving in and out of the studio, and our radiator is just not working. It's not holding any pressure. Every time we fill it up, it simply leaks. So again, we have plans for a bigger, better engine than the 289, so we want a better radiator. So today we're going to move our stock radiator and replace it with an aluminum unit from ACP. This ACP Max Core radiator will be a direct replacement for the factory radiator in 1965 through 1966 Mustang. It's gonna bolt to the factory location, fit like original, but has much larger aluminum cores and a billet neck, which will do a much better job of dissipating heat. It has the factory connections for the automatic transmission cooler, and again, will bolt right into the factory location. Okay guys, before you even drain the coolant, make sure the radiator is cold. You do not want it hot because it'll be under pressure and you could hurt yourself. So just make sure it's cold and then go to the bottom of the radiator and drain the fluid out. Okay, so the radiator is still draining out, but we're below the upper radiator hose so we can get that one removed. And as you can see, we already have a brand new one up here. So we can actually get the vehicle running, but we'll actually have to replace the lower one. So just unscrew your hose clamp. pop it out of the way, and then just pull the hose off. There we go. And just tuck it away. Then you can get to the lower one once the coolant's all drained out. Once the coolant's all drained out, we're actually gonna remove our transmission lines now. Put one on each side. Just loosen the hose clamp and pull them off. It also would be a good time if your hoses are bad and you know brittle, just time to replace them. Once you have that one off, then do the other side. Okay, now we're on to the last thing to remove our radiator. There's four bolts, one on top on both sides and two on the bottom. Just use a half inch socket to remove the bolt. Remember to keep the bolts, we'll be reusing them. Once all the bolts up, just pull it straight up. There we go. With the radiator out, it's actually a lot easier to get to the lower radiator hose. Just have a little more wiggle room. Loosen that hose clamp off the water pump. And then just wiggle the hose off. Sometimes use a screwdriver. Grab your new radiator hose, put some new clamps on, slide it onto the water pump, but do not tighten it down. Since we have a thicker radiator, we actually have to remove the fan to install our radiator. So just grab a half inch socket and remove the four bolts. Okay, with all the bolts up, just grab and remove your fan. All right, with the fan removed, slide your radiator in place. And then we can bolt it down. With all the bolts in place, tighten down your radiator. All right, with the radiator in place now, we can see now that the fan is too close with this spacer. We sell multiple spacers here at CJ's, so get the right spacer that you need for the length between the radiator and the water pump pulley. So I removed the two trans fittings off the original radiator. Just get them removed, put some new sealant on them, and put them into the new radiator. And then carefully tighten them down. Slide your trans lines back on. And then tighten them down. Install your lower radiator hose. <laughs> As 
slide your hose clamp on. Once the lower radiator hose is done, go ahead and tighten up your upper radiator hose. Go, slide your clamp on and then tighten it down. Reinstall your overflow hose, slide it onto the nipple. Then slide the hose between the two clamps on the radiator. You can bend them out a little bit. Slide it in. And then push down on the clips a little bit. And then hold it in place. Once you figure out the right spacer and bolt your fan down, add coolant back into your radiator. Once you finally topped off your coolant and your radiator, put a new radiator cap on, click it on, and your installation is complete. Our ACP Max Core Aluminum Radiator was a perfect choice for this project car. It's going to work with the stock engine we have now, but it'll also work in the future when we add some more horsepower to this car. And like Brendan said, we will have to get a fan spacer so we can use the factory fan, but in the future we are going to upgrade to electric fan anyway. As you saw, the installation is pretty straightforward. Give yourself about an hour to an hour and a half. We'll be back on the road in no time.